Good morning, everyone. How are you? Rose here. So today I'm reacting to a live stream that Foodie did last night called Let's Bees. So this live stream went on for almost three hours. Obviously, we're not going to cover all three hours. We'll skip ahead if we need to. But Foodie in this live stream, she talks more about her date. And of course, she goes into unnecessary vulgar detail. But I wanted to do a react for all of you this morning. So let me just go ahead and share the screen so you guys can see what we're looking at. And there's Foodie. There she is. There's our lady of the hour. So on top of going off about her date in inappropriate ways, you know, she goes off about the reaction channels. Foodie seems to have a love-hate relationship with the reaction channel. She hates us, but if we don't react to her, she flips out. So let's just see what Miss Foodie has to say today. And then we'll go on to the comment section as usual. So good morning to everyone. Hope you're having a good day and you continue to have a good day. Let's do this thing. Oh, yeah. Anyways, he's like, this P is yours always. And I was like, so what am I even fussing about? What am I even fussing about? What? I mean, <sighs> big girth instead of big church. Anyway, I also got a weird message from somebody today. Oh yeah, fuck Monty's getting more. Him and fucking stale piece of shit bread are getting so desperate for content. Why do you keep threatening police action anyways? Oh, who's going to be arrested first? Maybe the fuck it will be you if you don't shut the fuck up. And I find it really rich. Are you making that threat again, Foodie? Did you just do that? For those who don't know, Foodie actually said on a live stream not too long ago, that she was gonna press false charges against Monty. And Monty, he didn't take that lightly. Foodie, are you doing it again? Are you threatening Monty with some kind of legal action again? Did you just do that? Ma'am, you can't do that. You can't use the legal system to go after somebody unless there's good reason. And you don't have a good reason. Because Monty's not coming after you. He's not sending SWAT teams to your house. Just because you like to play games with the legal system when you get mad at Natter doesn't mean you can do that with other people. You shouldn't be doing it at all. That's not what the police are for. That's not what the legal system is for. When you get mad and you want to get back at somebody, okay? You just can't do that. You want to fight with Natter or you want to have an attitude, that's fine. But don't involve the authorities unless there's good reason to. Coming from you, fighting my post, talking about wiener size, disgusting. It is. When you have a panel of jealous loser women up there every day, picking apart my vagina, my fupa, making con comments about me as a woman, uh, being, um, I'm sorry, uh, being uh, a victim of abuse or not being a victim of abuse. You know what? I'm in a mood this morning. I'm in a mood. I'm, I'm in a good mood. I just woke up. I'm having my coffee. I'm in a beautiful environment. You guys know that. Washington is gorgeous. But listening to this person, Foodie Beauty, has put me in a bit of a mood for the moment. It won't last long. After the react is over, the mood will be over. But I'm in a mood right now. You know what, Foodie? I'm getting so tired of you going for Monty, going for Monty's panels. Haven't we had this talk already? Haven't we had it? I think we have. Maybe you didn't listen the first five times. So let me just put this out there again. If you don't like what's going on on Monty's page, don't go there. If you don't like the panels, then don't listen. But how can you sit there, ma'am, and call anybody on that panel a desperate loser and pathetic. When you got involved with a crackhead, you brought him to YouTube, you, in, you introduced him to other women when he should not have been introduced. And for the past year, you were funding that crackhead. You were paying his way, paying his rent, 
you're still paying for his phone bill. That's why your recent phone bill is $3,000. I'm sure a lot of that had to do with him. You funded that crackhead. You funded that loser. You were that person driving back and forth to Gatineau and then to Montreal multiple times to see him, pick him up, take him to hotel and motel rooms, take him on shopping trips, got him whatever he wanted. So do you have any license to call anybody else a desperate loser? All those women on the panel do is give their opinions and feelings, but you fell in love with and funded a crackhead. And what's even sadder is that you're still funding him. You're still paying his way. We know you're still seeing him. We know. That's why you have these multiple men and multiple dates. We know it's all a decoy system. The more men you see, the more men you talk to, the more times you can go slip away and you think nobody will know. Trust me, we know. We know. And if you want to go see Natter, you want to go slip away to go see Natter and pay his way, it's your life. You can do what you want. You can see who you like. But this whole system you got going on of thinking you can lie, everybody else is stupid. We're not stupid. We're looking at you as being stupid because you keep doing it. But again, it's your life. You can do what you like with it. Have at it. We just wish you would be truthful and stop all this ridiculous lying that makes no sense. But judging a panel of women saying that they're losers, I'm sure there's not a single person on that panel that would pick a crackhead to fall in love with and then pay their way, pay thousands of dollars for a hot-headed, foul-tempered, talentless loser like you have. So by that definition about who's the biggest loser, that would be you. You really can't judge anybody else on being a loser until you look in the mirror first, because the person you see staring back at you is the biggest loser and continues to be because you haven't stopped funding him yet. You suck my fucking poop of all. Are no, you kidding? You. Human retention needs to be blocked. Why is he being so mean? Because he's he knows I'm right. Because I'm calling him out. And when you call people out, their true colors come out, don't they? Right? So for you saying I can't take responsibility and I can't own my shit or take accountability for what I say, neither the fuck can you. Again, sit the hell down in your gamer chair and shut up. <laughs> Was that supposed to be a burn? Have you forgotten that you have a gamer chair? You bought a gamer chair and it's upstairs in your bedroom. The gamer chair thing is a non-point. What's wrong with having a gamer chair? They're very expensive. You got one yourself. And the sad thing is you're not even a freaking gamer, foodie. You bought an expensive gamer chair for what? You don't even play video games on it. You made a big to-do about I've got a gaming computer and I've got a gamer chair. Therefore, that makes me a gamer girl. You did that for Twitch. What happened? What happened? Nothing happened. You went through all the motions of getting ready for Twitch, and nothing happened on Twitch except for sleep streams that had nothing to do with a gamer chair or a gaming computer. Nothing. Monty isn't a loser. He's got his act together. Can't say the same about you, though. So annoying. Even more annoying is this loser panel. I can't even understand how people can stand listening to them. Between Sarah and Jane. And fucking. All the jealous other women up there on the panel that look like this. Yeah, they look like this.
Liliana, you always spoke with me. I loved it. This shirt fits a lot better now. I like a lot of high, you know what? I love high waisted pants. High waisted pants are my thing now. Ninety percent of the population. You know what, Alyssa L. Shammy? I mean, why y'all lying to Foodie? Y'all over there telling her she looks better than ninety percent of the population. I guess you guys don't get out much if that's the way you think. You know, and let me add to that, that beauty isn't just about the outside. Because I have met people that were physically attractive outside, but on the inside, they were ugly. They were very, very ugly. They had an ugly soul. Foodie's got a very ugly soul. And I don't care how many wigs she buys. I don't care how much makeup she piles on herself. She's got an ugly inside. And that's why I feel woman to woman, that she has a hard time keeping a man around because she's got an ugly inside. Don't matter if you're wearing Estee Lauder makeup, booty. Don't matter if you spend $1,000 on a wig, you're still ugly inside. And no amount of makeup that you, that you may want to eat is going to fix that. You're going to eat all the makeup in your house. It's still not going to fix that ugly inside, girl. That 22-year-old will not give up. The one who catfished me? Oh, man, I can't really, I can't really, maybe I should give him a turn of the, 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 Sofa King trying to do something, making that big old super chat. Talking about Monty is an insult. Hey, Sofa, I heard about what you did. There's a video on YouTube from Kermit, who's a very, very beautiful woman. You were bothering her, weren't you? And you got called all the way out. You got exposed. And I saw a picture of you, Sofa. You ain't nothing, okay? You ain't nothing to look at. You've come on my channel before and been a complete jerk for no reason. You, Lambo, and Cheeseburger, you all came over here and you all got blocked. But you over there, Sofa, trying to judge other people and how they look. I saw a picture of you. You ain't nothing, son. Wouldn't even look at you twice. And just like Foodie, you got an ugly soul, too. Hi, Lacey. 96%. <laughs> Monty. The insult of the hooker, and he not as innocent as he tries to come off. People really need to read his QB Farms thread, search Monty stories from the internet. He has very weird behavior. Which, what? Really? And you know what, Sofa, on that note, you're, you're trying to call out Monty and do something. Listen, Sofa, I've heard about you. Because word gets around. I've heard about your behavior, Sofa, you creeper going into other people's chats, women's chats, and bothering them, looking for nude pictures, making inappropriate comments, you pervert. Desperate, thirsty ass. Yeah, I've heard about you. Like I said, word gets around, Sofa. You should really learn to leave women alone that want nothing to do with you. Yeah, Kermit came out and said what she said. You're a creeper, bro. Keep your appendage in your pants and stop pointing it in the direction of women that want nothing to do with it. Oh no, so if I can't read that, I'm gonna really call the cops on us. Thank you, Sofa. Isn't Monty a teenager? How how old is he? I mean, I don't know about all that. Like he's thanks for the super chat. That was very nice of you. You had to, you had to spend that much to spend that many words, right? It's like you have to spend a certain amount to say as many words as you want, don't you? So stupid. A read of his kiwi farm threats. What? He won't call the cops. He does not want them to find his city. What? Oh, he's 39. He's older than me, really. <laughs> he's older than you, and he's got more class. And that's something you have none of, foodie. Class. 
you don't have any kind of class. Maybe that's why you're having to go on these hookup sites and you can get nothing but hookups because you have no class. You have no class, madam, none at all. And that's why you're reduced to just going to cheap, sleazy motels and hook up with men because you have no class. That's why men won't claim you. You have no class, no manners, no nothing. All you got is your money. As I said in a live chat recently, I saw a picture online that I will never forget because it's so true. It said, some people are so poor, uh, some people are so poor, all they have is money. That would be you. You are the living, breathing, walking, talking definition of money does not buy happiness because you got money, but you are not happy. You are so not happy. That's why you're chasing around crackheads and paying their way. It's nothing. Hello. What? <laughs> Ew, this tasted like broccoli. <coughs> All the vegetables that get stuck in your poop are in season. If certain guys are open, there's proof of his behavior called the cops on Monty. <laughs> right, so, but like, what's his problem? Why is he threatening the cops so much? Because you do. Because you're threatening somebody with sending the cops on them. Yeah, I take that seriously. Knowing how you like to use the legal system to get back at people. Like, what are the cops going <laughs> Same thing with fucking Natter. Cool. Did you see him dancing around with this pink slip he had? I'm I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Jesus Christ. Turns out anyone can report fake shit to the police, yeah. Yeah, like you. He's gonna call the cops on everyone. <laughs> Why is everyone? What's that? Hello, Officer Sean Callender. These were being mean to me. Oh, fuck. You're smoking an indica? Yes, chaperone sherry. Off the rail. Watermelon Z. No. That's so cool. Is it nice? I'm going to try. This guy. Sofa King. I don't know what crawled up your ass and died, bro. Sofa King says he's an incel and threatens women, including Chantal, and tired of it. I've watched few, a few of Monty's panels. I've watched more than a few. I haven't seen him threaten any women. I've only seen him uh, talk about calling uh, the cops on Chantal just because Chantal threatened legal action. I haven't seen him threaten or be a nuisance to any other woman. And he's not really being a nuisance to Foodie. He's just sticking up for himself because she's threatening him with legal action. But I haven't seen any kind of threatening or harassing or behavior from Monty. But you, Sofa King, heard about you. You want to talk about how you went into young, dumb honey buns chat and was bothering her? You want to talk about that, you pervert? We want to have a discussion about the many women you bothered asking for nude pictures, being a creeper, because you can't keep your thing in your pants. Before you go criticizing anybody else's behavior, Sofa, you should look at yourself. You should understand that women don't want to be bothered by someone like you. I... <laughs> He's an incel and threatens women and I'm tired of it. Oh, well. I'm honestly tired of like seeing his fucking nasty videos pop up. Like, I don't I watch so much harassment. Like, don't watch. I feel like it. Like, he's kind of freaky. Same thing with stale coats. They're so seemingly hateful towards me. Like, then don't watch. I, I feel like a broken record over here. And I'm sorry if I am repeating myself. It's just 
I'm all about logic and reason, y'all. And there's an old saying, you don't like it, don't look. Seriously, don't like it, don't look. If you don't like something, don't look at it. Don't pay attention to it. She keeps paying attention to it because she's got a huge ego. She's a narcissist and she wants to know what everybody else is saying. She's incredibly nosy. You don't like it, foodie. Don't look, don't pay attention. It's just that simple. For what reason? What did I do? Did I do anything to these people except not like to be take their shit? They're gonna make him cry. <laughs> he wants to smash my cake. What? Ew. He's a nasty thing. You wish. You wish he can get something as good as Monty. You know, Monty's a gentleman. He's got class and manners and you wish you'd get something that good. You could never. Uh, you call them stale toast? Stale tiniest piece of crap bread. Stale almond fucking loaf. This, this woman needs to be taken off of YouTube. I want my 39 year old to look. I don't want any men with fucking salt and pepper hair. I know. What are you going to talk about, stale crouton, without my content? I need to be taken off of YouTube? Who's more interesting than me right now? Hmm? Nobody. Everything. Everything's more interesting than you. Trust me, there's a lot more things in life interesting than you, Chantal. You're, there's a lot more interesting things. If, if you were such, if you were the interesting thing that you think you are, question, how is it that you have a 90 plus K channel and you don't even get half that in views? If there's nothing else in life more interesting than foodie beauty, why aren't your views higher? Why aren't your super chats higher? I mean, make it make sense here. Half your viewers are the reaction channels because they got to react to your content. And the other half are hate watchers. You got maybe 5% of people that watch you because they like you. And that's because they don't know you yet. But once they figure you out, they'll go to the reaction channels because your content is boring. It's the same shit over and over, over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And I can't wait to start doing gaming content so I can give something more positive to my viewers. I'm going to start doing vlogs and everything else because you're just boring. You are. Who are you going to talk about? Nobody. Every, everything. Everything. Nice, Langello. Sounds great. Girlfriend, you're sitting in your disgusting, dirty ass living room with Box Mountain number four behind you, how is that interesting? If you were watching you from my perspective, looking at you and you were complaining about the reaction channels and sitting there getting high, would you think you were interesting? No, you would turn the channel immediately. Concept of a panel, aka a motley collection of weirdos. They and don't don't watch. don't watch. They don't. all look like they're on something and they talk about me being on something. You are, <laughs> but you are on something. Look, you're on something right now. You're getting high. What do you mean? Five. Right? Like, yeah. <laughs> These reaction channels are reaching so far up their butt for stuff now. Like, what happened? Like, did I just get my life together, sort of? And now they're like, oh, no, we have to make shit up. Let's remind people she's actually not a good person for no reason. We don't what have to remind that? them. We don't have to remind them. Like, seriously? You're that desperate? Okay. Can we cancel Gar? I told you his name is Stale Croutons. 
Monty has what three or four channels for him to talk so slow. Like his fucking comedy was a plunk. It, you were not funny. It You're was. A scientist. You're not funny. I hate Sam. <laughs> the channel is already taken that one. Knock on wood. So Amelia says, your channel was already taken down once and you came back. There's no taking down the Queen Visa. You know what? The only thing that saved Booty from complete deletion on YouTube, it's about money, y'all. Seriously. YouTube is a company. They're all about the, the profit. They're all about the dollar bill, obviously, because they have a terms of service and Foodie has broken it multiple times over. They brought her back just because of the money. Not because the money that her channel makes YouTube, but the money from the combined income from all reaction channels that react to Foodie. I don't know how much that is total. There's no way to know, but it must be quite a bit for them to take her down and bring her back so quickly. It's YouTube is a company. They don't they don't care about emotions. They don't care about what's morally right. They care about money. They care about the bottom line. So for anybody out there wondering, why is it that YouTube lets this go on? That's why. It's their company. They're all about, let's make some money here. So they must be making quite a money off of Foodie because they, they brought her back. What Kermit's video? Kermit's in the video? I wanted to put my thumbnail. I want to go play Mario. You guys are boring. I'm just choking, guys. Ben Stein from Viking Dry Life. Oh my god! Who's a scientist? Isn't he a scientist? His specialty is sperm retention. <laughs> Why? Monty himself wasn't bad. He's freaks on parade. He gave a voice to a rune. He's freaks on parade. Matter Easter Island head. <laughs> what does Dudu's head look like? She looks exactly like her brother. Like, is that a flex that you're having sex with Dudu? You admit it now? She looks like her brother. <laughs> Raven. Yeah, so Kermit did put out a video putting Sofa King on blast, but also showing some blacked out pictures, like part of their faces blacked out, of other people in Foodie's chat. And can I just say, and this is not me being mean or catty, some of the pictures I saw, some of you that are ragging and tagging on people who are on panel, and the reaction channels, y'all ain't got no room to talk about looks. You really, really don't. I mean, some of y'all in those pictures look very, very sloppy. So you really can't be ragging on anybody on Monty's panels or any of the reaction channels. You really, really can't. Because ain't, ain't nobody over there looking like Instagram models, all right? Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, um, what did you fucking say? Remember Applebee's, you said S Chan looks like the guy from Goop Troop. Can you do it, Beam? <laughs> I love S Chan, I'm sorry. No, I actually do really like S Chan. And you know what? I like his, but I like laughing. I laugh, I laugh at him, I laugh at me. He laughs at me too. I like watching his videos because he's always eating something, and I always like to watch that now. Um, Judith? No. You were driving? Oh. Okay, so here's Sofa King. He's having his five minutes of fame, so he's you know, he's just refusing to let this go. He says, she posted video without all of my messages, made it seem like I was lying. You were. She only proved that I I saw her and didn't want to meet her. 
Kermit is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I saw Kermit in a video. She's an absolutely beautiful woman. Stunning. I seriously doubt that if you did meet her, you, you turn her down. Sofa. Who, who are you kidding? If you're on Foodie's channel saying, oh, you're, you're such a queen, you're so gorgeous. I mean, really? I mean, not to be rude, not to be mean, but Chantal's looking busted compared to Kermit. All right? She looks busted compared to Kermit, and you're going to turn Kermit down? And she made fun of her lasagna. Was that her? <clears throat> My cheerleader. <laughs> Watch the video. <laughs> oh my God, Tessa from Team New York. Leave Judith alone. Yes, I love Judith. Hi, Norma Jean. You're not missing. Just angry little children searching. <laughs> Yes, can we not all act like children, please, love? Come on. So close. <laughs> I remember you saying that. And she got all mad and then posted your lasagna. Lasagna revenge porn. Revenge of lasagna. That should be illegal. Actually, that, I want that lasagna right now. It's fucking garlic bread. Not stale ass garlic bread. Uh, excuse me. Oh my god. You gotta, gotta be more ladylike. All my crushes are watching. I bet Sophie's lasagna was delicious with just the right amount of spice and meat. <laughs> oh god, I think I'm gonna agree now. I gotta order food. So if I love when Amelia shows up again, how could she? Oh, that's so nice. You know what I think? I think they're young. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's some people who are young here, and there's some who are more mature, you know? My suggestion, if you guys don't like each other, just fucking block each other. You won't see any of your each other's comments. I do it all the time. We have two worlds colliding here. Yeah, that's not cool going after exactly her husband, no. Her wearing that ring is so weird. Wearing that ring is humiliation fetish, but six is humiliation. Same with slippers. Uh, okay, honestly, like, or just to get views and like, you know, or to trigger me, which doesn't work. Like, like I said, if you analyze it, why the fuck would any woman respect any, res you have no respect for yourself, do you? Like, we've seen that in the- You know what? As far as Dee Dee wearing the ring, that Chantal bought for herself because she wanted to be claimed by Natter so badly and wearing her slippers. You got to remember, Natter has a channel, Chantal has a channel. They both want to make money. So they bounce everything off each other continuously to make money. They got to keep the drama going back and forth between both channels so that both channels make money. So anything they can do to drum up drama, to drum up views and money is what they'll do. Whether it's wearing a ring, wearing somebody else's slippers, fighting through their monitors, it's all for show. Do they get along off camera? I can't actually say. 
But what I do think is suspicious is that they allegedly all hate each other. And yet Chantal is over there paying his phone bill still. <clears throat> and although he can block her, he doesn't. She could stop watching him. She doesn't. They keep the lines of communication open. So question for everybody in the audience. If you hated somebody, if you really, really hated them, wouldn't you stop talking to them? Would you not want to be around them in any capacity? Right. So if the lines of communication are still going on, there can't be that much hate. The videos. Um, you've seen that this man wants to have sex with your best friend, who he thinks is hotter than you. Um, which you probably did already give in. After I've seen those photos, now it makes sense. And you, he had the nerve to sit in the car beside me and be like, ooh, they just asked me to take a picture. Like, he just lies so easily, too. Just like it's nothing. Just like second nature. Like, oh, nothing. And meanwhile, Shushu's hexagon face and her caterpillar eyebrows are like... You know, I actually saw a picture of Shushu on the farms. She's a beautiful woman. She's a beautiful woman. And here's Chantal being catty and insulting her looks. Meanwhile, she's got to look at herself in the mirror every day. And like I said, Chantal, beauty is inside and outside, and you are an ugly person. On the inside, you're an ugly, ugly person. And even if you lost a bunch of weight and you got to a reasonable weight, you would still be ugly on the inside. You would still be very unappealing to a lot of people just because of your inside. <clears throat> they probably double sucked it. Just like you always like, I hope it's worth it. Ugh, you're gross. Fucking sexual deviant. I am not foodie calling somebody a sexual deviant when she's over there running around seeing multiple guys, probably raw dogging all of them. Not you, foodie, calling other people sexual deviants. Not you. Girl. Sorry, guys, they trigger me sometimes. Sometimes? <laughs> no! That's mean! That's a mean one, Applebee's. Listen, plain cheese. I need to get this out. So... Like, I don't think any woman should be abused or endure what I've seen in that video. But you are pathetic. You are fucking pathetic. You look pathetic. You're both, you both look pathetic. You look like, honestly, like, mother and grandmother and son. Like, you're just gross. You think you're going to make anyone jealous with your fake-ass fucking relationship? Like, the only reason he's still at your house or your condo that he's punched holes in the wall in, by the way, that we can all see is because I fucking dropped his ass off and said bye because he's an abusive piece of crap. So really, who you know, foodie, I'm noticing a pattern with you and men. You always have to paint yourself the victor in whatever situation. You always got to put on appearances that you're always on top. If a guy rejects you, you always have to flip it to where oh, it's because he had too small of a package. Or if you get rejected by Natter, you'll come on camera and you'll flip the script and say, well, you have him because I didn't want him. Well, if you don't want him, you don't want him. But it doesn't make sense to sit there and still pay for a man if you don't want him. It doesn't make sense to continue to pay his phone bill, which you are. It doesn't make sense to sit there and continue to see him on the sneak like you have been. It doesn't make sense to go to his YouTube channel and post messages in his chat and to watch his live streams. None of that makes sense. If you're done, you're done, but you're not done. So trying to paint this picture of I had the choice to stay, and I didn't. 
That's not what happened. That's not what happened. Because you went apartment hunting with this man. And more than once, you talked about getting rid of your cats and getting rid of Pete's to be with him. Happened more than once. And if Dee Dee were not in the picture at all, you know you'd be over there right now. You're not there because he's living with another woman and he doesn't want to be with you. And even if Pete's were in the picture, the cats were in the picture, if you both were completely alone, it still wouldn't work. He needs a completely submissive woman. You're not that. You can play act at it for a minute, but you're too headstrong and you're too defiant. The two of you are oil and water. You said to yourself, two days is the max. So how could you ever live with him? How could it ever work? Even if Dee Dee did not steal your man, it still wouldn't work. You're chasing after something you will never, ever completely have. All because of your huge ego. Because in your mind, because you paid all that money, you did all those things, you're entitled to Natter. In your mind, because of that, you bought him. And because you bought him, because you spent thousands of dollars, he owes himself to you. You can spend a bunch of money on somebody. Doesn't mean you own them. Doesn't mean you own their free will, but yet you continue to pay because you don't like to lose. You are a sore loser. And if you lose anything, you try to get some of your pride back by being vengeful and causing some sort of trouble. That's just on brand for you. Who the fuck is jealous here? No, I don't think so. So keep that tainted Jafar ring. Which I bought ironically because you're a fucking Disney villain. Really. Straight out of a Disney movie. Really. Jafar. That's what you are. You even look like him. You even look like Jafar. What would his Didi look like? Fucking Barney level. So Barney, like honestly, would you be turned on by watching a porno of Barney and Jafar having sex? No. So why would I be jealous of you two doing it? You can stop reminding the world that you are with your gross apples. Nobody gives a shit. Actually, we're all left. Proof that she watches his live streams. Her going into this detail. Foodie, you're proving to your audience and everybody else you still watch him. If you're done, you wouldn't watch him. You would not want if you two were really done. If you really, really hated him, like you say you do. You could easily turn your attentions away from Natter and his channel would just fade away. But we all know you're not done. The three of you are working together behind the scenes to keep the money flowing for both channels. That's the way it's always been. That's the way it'll always be. So it doesn't matter if you come on camera with your fake outrage and your fake drama and your fake hate saying, I hate Natter, he's a loser, he's abusive, blah, blah, blah. But whatever he is, it must not be that bad because you won't stay away from him. Laughing at you. Ew. Bye. <laughs> Jafar is the monkey. <laughs> is he on his own panel? Still going on so about the panel. Okay. Where's all my beezers? TV looks like party! Crap! Fuck! Stop that! They have a throw up kink. Ugh. Fuck. What shape is Shoe Shoe? Hexagon. I'm round, I know, but whatever. Shoe shop. Um, I don't know. Remember where the picture of shoe shoes from? Ask Matter. He has some in his fucking phone. 
Why do you have a picture of Choo Choo? Because those are things we did! Yeah, you yelled at me for that, you remember? And now I know why. You wanted it double suck. Every time. Gross. Every time we would be mixed. You can see she's a sad, um, desperate woman in Lachine, you know, who could only get a desperate man like Natter. And you're the desperate person who is running back and forth from Gatineau and Ottawa, and then from Ottawa to Montreal. <laughs> Not foodie calling other people desperate. A criminal, like Natter. So they were perfect for each other. And she lets him punch her in the face. That's what he loves, right? That's what they like. That's what they say. And let me remind everyone who does not know, anyone that might be coming to my channel new to the foodie beauty stuff. So for those who are not longtime watchers of this whole foodie natter saga, something to remember or to know, depending on who you are. In the beginning, when Foodie and Natter were seeing each other, Foodie would come back from her visits with bruises on her chest and her arms. And in those occasions, she did not say, he abused me. She didn't try to hide the bruises. She was very proud of them. She showed them all for the cameras and was boasting about the rough sex. So in the beginning, whenever she would come home with bruises on her chest or her arms, they were like trophies to her. She couldn't wait to show them off to people. And then suddenly when she got mad at him, then she would flip it over to, he abused me. And then after she was done being mad at him, he smoothed things over with her. She would flip it back over to, he's a nice guy. You guys don't understand. You don't know what goes on off camera, et cetera, et cetera. And for the past year, she has continuously like flip-flopped from one side to the other, depending on if he makes her angry or not. She has not kept a straight narrative all the way through. So I don't mean to put anything adult in people's faces, sorry. Considering what I saw in the beginning, when she wasn't mad at him, because when somebody's mad, they're in a high emotional state, aren't they? You get mad, you get mad, but you gotta look at the periods of time when she wasn't mad at him. When a person's angry, sometimes the things they say are influenced by their emotion. So when she wasn't mad at him, the bruises were a good thing. But when she was mad at him, suddenly they became a bad thing. I'm just gonna say it. I think that Foodie, she might be into the rough stuff. It might be her thing. And there's nothing wrong with that if you enjoy that. You know, it's your kink, whatever. She might enjoy the roughness here and there, the rough play. I've always suspected that Foodie has more than a little bit of a humiliation degradation fetish. It would explain a lot of her behavior. That might also be her kink. Again, if that's what you got, nothing wrong with that. If that's what does it for you, we all have our kinks. We all have our things that make us happy. But I've always suspected that there are some darker layers to Foodie as far as what she gets into. And that be, might be part of the reason why she just can't move away from Natter. Because he indulges those darker layers. And maybe she hasn't found anybody else yet that can indulge her that way. That's why she's so stuck on him. And continues to be stuck on him. Because he can do things to her that maybe other people could not or would not do. And so she just sticks with him because that's her comfort zone. No notification. Yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I get that. Uh, 
Uh, excuse me, someone answered me with that hideous tattoo she got me. What tattoo? Who? Stop what? Go get the glue remover. Like, we saw this man who doesn't love you. He doesn't love you. Again, he punched you in the face, dumbass. And he wants to fuck your fucking best friend. You're prettier best friend. What a fucking loser. <laughs> Probably Lolo. Okay, I said this in the live chat. I'm going to say it here. Nobody come for me. This is just my opinion. I watched the Sam's Bar Lounge videos. I watched them all because I wanted to do recaps for all of you who did not want to watch it, who might be triggered by severe things. I want to give you guys an alternative to watching the videos. You can keep up with what was going on without having to actually see it. So I watched them all and I watched the last one. I watched it a couple of times. And you guys know that I have knowledge about BDSM. So that's why I watched it a couple of times because watching, especially the last one, something just seemed off, like not right. Something not normal. I watched the last one. This is me giving my thoughts. Some of you might disagree or agree. And whatever you feel, you feel. And I respect it. So I watched it the first time. And it looked abusive. But again, something fell off. That's why I watched it again to try to figure out what looked off to me. And in my honest opinion, this is how I feel. My opinion now, I feel that Didi and Natter, that during that whole thing going on on the third tape, in BDSM, the way that things normally go, during a scene, one occasion, you got one person who is a dom and one person who is a sub. And they stay within those boundaries during the scene play. In that video that I watched, it looked like, from my perspective now, it looked like during that thing that Natter and Dee, Dee were switching off the dom sub thing back and forth during that video you know it started off with Dee, Dee being more of the dom and she has made comments in live streams like i want to be the dom i want to be the dom so it leads me to believe that they're both switches neither one is completely dom or sub in, in bdsm a switch is somebody who can be dom or sub in normal situations for that when you do a scene, one person stays in one role, one stays in the other. That's how they keep things separate and you give more structure and discipline and control. But during that video, it looked like they were switching off with each other back and forth, back and forth. Dee Dee started out as more of the dominant or she was more the provoker. She was calling him a coward repeatedly. And if you, on a normal situation, if you've got someone who is abusive, you don't want to do anything to provoke them, do you? You really, really don't. Because if they're abusive, you're afraid of their temper. You don't want to provoke them because it might go too far. But she was poking at him hard, calling him a coward. I don't know if the word coward in their scene play is a trigger word. If she wants him to get to a certain point because she wants a certain kind of reaction, but she kept calling him a coward. And that's a pretty strong word to call someone who is allegedly abusive. She kept poking at him. She kept calling him a coward. And then I think she did it too much and things went too far, way too far. And I also, something else that I noticed in that video that looked strange to me. 
Dee was doing a lot of narrating, like saying what was happening. And I know there was a third person on the phone listening. I don't know if they were directing and giving directions and they wanted to see certain things. Perhaps they were in that part. The audio was taken out just so all of us who watch, we couldn't hear their voice. We couldn't hear the direction of them saying, do this, do this. We just heard what we heard. But Dee Dee was doing a lot of narrating, like saying what was going to happen or saying what was happening. And in normal abusive situations, you're not doing a whole lot of narrating. She wasn't doing, she, she, you're, you're not concerned about narrating a situation, like giving like play by play. That looked weird to me. When Natter allegedly punched her, because we didn't see it on camera, when you get hit, like say on your arm or something, wouldn't your first reaction to like physically react and say, ow, that hurt? She didn't do that. She's like, oh, he punched me in the face. Like giving a play by play. That looked weird to me. Like not, ow, no. You know, she was narrating like, when he allegedly came out there with a knife, she made a point to say that twice. Are you coming at me with a knife? Are you coming at me with a knife? That looks strange to me. You know, it just, it looked weird. In past videos, she used the word daddy. I don't know if the word daddy is what she calls him. Like that's her name for him during the scene play. But also something else that I noticed that when she says the word father, that might be a word to stop. That might be a, a code word for them to cut off the play. That she's done too much. Like everything's gone too far. Because immediately after she said that, he, he got a different look in his eye. He calmed down and everything just stopped. He didn't keep going after her. He, he had this, oh, crap, what did I do? Look in his eye. That's, it, it just looks strange to me, okay? I think they both went back and forth as far as switching off, switching off during that video. But because neither one had a clear-cut role, they were switching off, switching off, and the scene play went too far. It went too far. And this is what happens when you get two people who do those sort of activities. There's no clear cut code words. There's no definite stopping points. There's no boundaries. It's just them winging it as they go. Those are my thoughts. I don't know how you guys feel about that, but watching that, that's what I took away from it. You got two people who are doing that type of play, but because there are no clear cut boundaries, things just went too far. They went too far. But I honestly think that maybe Dee Dee is, she likes to provoke Natter. She wants to get things to a high intensity level. Chantal strikes me as just being the same. But even if you like someone to get to a high intensity level, there should be clear cut boundaries and stopping points and safe words. And it should never go too far. Okay. So let's move on from here. Oh, she's an idiot. Oh my god. Ugh. She's learning to speak Arabic. What a fucking like if how can her family even let that asshole around them? Uh anyway, it's not my problem. Like fucking be miserable. I hope he goes to jail and leaves you the fuck alone and miserable. Ugh. Oh, sorry, pills for rent. What? Love after lockup. Ew. <clears throat> well, you can visit Dee Dee and her mom in the nursing home pretty soon together. 
That's at least a plus for you. Walking distance since you're a bum and don't drive. You're ragging on him for not helping a car and not driving, but didn't you just drive to go get someone to have a hookup with and drive him back? You seem to have an affinity for men that don't have much money, don't have a car, and can't drive. I don't know what it is about those qualities, but you seem to look for men that have those qualities. And watch, you would blame this on me. Oh, well, you're the one. Why are you being a fucking bitch and talking about me online? So you're the one who fucking did this to me. You ruined my reputation. You still don't get it? No, you never take ownership of your actions. You are the abusive one, Kyle. You're both abusive. Let's just put that out there. You're both abusive. It's not just him. It's you. You're both abusive. You have admitted to being verbally abusive. I suspect that you might be physically abusive as well because you got a temper too, Chantal. You know you do. You're both abusive. You're even abusive to your own viewers. You know, with the intimidation and the bullying and all that. You're an abusive person. Yes, you are. You need anger management classes. Now, how does he drive? So he gets to a man's brain when they become fucking I want you to play the Stranger Things version of running up that hill. When she would just put your hands in your pocket. Depression. Like, I remember just every time I was with him, I would feel insanely mentally ill. Like, just drained of energy. Just really? Girl, you would be moping and waiting by the phone for him to call. And the moment you knew you could be over there, you were at lightning speed, putting on your makeup and running to Gatineau. What are you talking about? Completely drained. Oh. Was it of last year? Yeah. So this is the most recent. So yeah, it was like last year, July 8th. So no. So it's like something with drugs, something with peace. We already know all about that. I'm a very open book. I fucking pretty much shared so much. Like, pretty much everything with you guys. You overshared. We've heard about things we really shouldn't have heard about. And as far as you, Dee Dee, and Natter, if you guys are into some kind of kinky whatever situation, honestly, that should have been kept off YouTube. That's for all of you. If that is a private situation, it should have been kept private. But all three of you made a point to bring it here where it should not have been brought. Because this is not an adult only forum. There are minors on YouTube. They should not be exposed to all this stuff, Chantal. A lot of the things that you've done should not have been put on YouTube, should not have been allowed. The flashing and showing your private parts, that shouldn't be on YouTube. There are minors here. You're coming on YouTube doing drugs. That shouldn't be on YouTube. Talking about all this vulgar sexual shit. That shouldn't be on YouTube. It's gross. It's gross and it's inappropriate. And it's not meant for a public forum where children or minors can hear it. So I'm not like really fuck whatever. <laughs> Maybe like I said, I heard like a record like a him the noise of messenger when I was like from behind having sex with him. What? Like, if Ew. that's what it is, and you're just, what, you're going to, by the way, that to humiliate me? Like, that's so illegal. Like, I cannot fucking wait to fucking grill these people for whatever they do. People is not stupid, you know, say it's good, but. <clears throat> and said, even if it wasn't under the duress of narc abuser, he would still forgive me. So. You pray be starfish, but I have to be fit. So we need to go up first. I want to watch 90 Day Fiance and eat something. It's so hard to see him on YouTube long. Pete says he's obsessed just because. Okay, that's enough hearing about matter. I don't know what else she's going to say, and honestly, I don't care. We're going to go to something more interesting. We're going to go to the comments section.
Uh, Rocky says, Chantal, if Dee Dee looks like Natter's grandmother, even though she's only eight years older than him, how do you think you're going to look next to the 22 year old whom is 16 years younger? You literally look like his grandmother. You're not much younger than Dee Dee, my love. Chantal, you're almost 40 years old, two years shy of being 40. And yet, for some reason, you like to age shame. I don't know why that is. You're using the fact that you're 38 years old to flex in some way. You're 38. You're in very bad health. You have very little stamina. You can barely move. And yet you think it's appropriate to age shame people. You really shouldn't do that. Spider Rico says, I love your new background of boxes. Yeah, I guess she's going for the messy house aesthetic. I guess that's her new green screen. Rhoda K says, it's a shame Chantal is too superior to date other white people. She and SJM would actually be a compatible and cute couple insofar as anything about our beast is cute. Uh, I don't know what Chantal has against white men. It just seems like she's got something against white men. I don't know why, but she absolutely refuses to date white men. I don't know if, you know, because she's not attracted to them or, or what, but she just refuses to date them. Uh, Nancy says, no one on Monty's panel is body shaming you. They are only trying to give you helpful advice. You know, if Chantal watched the panels from a constructive criticism point of view, there is a lot of constructive criticism, but all she hears is criticism. But you know what? The same could be said about people in her chat because people in her chat have given her lots of advice, but she doesn't want to take it. She looks at anything and everything as criticism. If somebody says, hey, you should eat healthier and here's an idea or get a treadmill or something, she looks at that as being attacked and she just blocks her ears. Uh, Loretta H says, calling Dee Dee a loser, LMAO, how many days in a row have you sat in Montreal waiting and wishing? Yeah, you might need to take several seats on that one. Yeah, she keeps driving back and forth to Montreal, either to see him or wait to see him, and she wants to call other people pathetic. Sexual Napalm says, that poor punk young dude saw what he saw in person and dipped. You're saltier about it than that gravy you're slurping down, Chantal. You know, that's what happens. If you exaggerate yourself, and you lie about yourself, you catfish people, and then they finally meet you. When they meet you in person, you can't hide behind filters on a phone. What's the point in lying? Why not just be upfront about who you are and what you look like, and that way you will know that person is into you, either romantically or intimately, and they won't be running the other way. Ooh, Jay of Cornwall says you look like your personality. Yikes. Uh, DK says, believe me, we know how men feel about you. And maybe if you'd humble yourself a bit, stop lying about all these men and stop viciously shaming and hating on everyone, you wouldn't get as much hate. Well, if she would just stop being a ugly person in general, her attitude, her outlook, her ego, her narcissism, and just take care of herself. She would do a lot better. But she is headstrong and she's dead set on being the most vulgar, shocking, gross, offensive person on YouTube. So if that's what she wants to be, then you got to take what comes with that. Uh, Patty Salmison Burton says, you're fussing about the 23 year old because you have to pay for it, period. Yeah, that's an interesting thing about Ms. Chantal, isn't it? 
she talks about all these men that are chasing her and they're they're so concerned for her welfare but yet she's the one running back and forth to pick these guys up bring them back home making the phone calls going on these dating sites how wanted are you chantal if you're the one doing all the chasing and the go-getting Oh, here we go. Sun says pride, greed, lust, envy, gluttony, wrath, and sloth. Yeah, those are the seven deadly sins. Every single live stream is the same. So I'm going to put the same comment. And if you think it's a spam, she's the spam repeat. Every day boring as hell. Damn right. I don't have to watch, but everyone watches a train wreck for a little while. Yeah, train wrecks and can be interesting until they go too far. Then it's not interesting anymore. But she is the walking, talking, physical embodiment of all the seven deadly. She doesn't leave any of them out. Uh, Julie B says, does she really think we believe that all these hot men want her? Does she forget Natter? Sorry, I'm not buying it, Booty Beauty. Well, neither am I. I'm not buying what she's selling. I don't care how much she tries to sell it for. Three R says, Monty just lost a family member and you're still heckling and harassing him. If you were a real content creator like you've claimed to be, you wouldn't care about what others say about you. You go on about your day and make your content. You live off of every video with your name on it and the comments that come with them. Absolutely agreed, Three. Like I said, if she don't like it, she don't have to look, she don't have to listen. She makes a point to go into other people's areas and then she complains about what she finds there if she doesn't want to be triggered or angered in some way she can always just turn her face away pay attention to something else three says you're making so many enemies you have so much hate but for sure you're more daring behind the computer you don't stand up for you when you're face to face no she backs out every single time she would never say in person the things that she says behind her phone. She would never have the courage. She would just giggle and run away. And see, people say they don't believe her stories. Uh, let's see. All right, so that's it for the comments. Hope you guys have enjoyed this React video. If you have, please like and subscribe and leave a comment yourself. Thank you very much for watching and spending some quality time with me. Thank you much, and please have a great, great day. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.